fascism has outgrown the dilemma, monarchy versus republic, over which democratic regimes too long dallied, attributing all insufficiencies to the former and proing the latter as the regime of perfection. Whereas experience teaches that some republics are inherently reactionary and absolutist, while some monarchies accept the most daring political and social experiments. In one of his philosophic meditations, uh, Renan, who had uh, pre-fascist institutional remarks, reason and science are the products of mankind, but it is chimerically to seek reason directly for the people and through the people. It is not essential to the existence of reason that all should be familiar with it, and even if all had to be initiated, this could be or this could not be achieved through democracy, which seems fated to lead to the extinction of all arduous forms of culture, all highest forms of learning. It says the maxim that society exists only for the well-being and freedom of the individual composing it does not seem to be in conformity with nature's plan, which care only for the species and seem ready to sacrifice the individual. It is much to be feared that the last word of democracy thus understood, and let me hasten to add that it is susceptible of a different interpretation, would be a form of society in which a degenerate mass would have no thought beyond that of enjoying the ignoble pleasure of the vulgar. In rejecting democracy, fascism rejects the absurd conventional lie of political egalitarianism, the habit of collective irresponsibility, the myth of felicity in indefinite progress. But if democracy be understood as meaning a regime in which the masses are not driven back to the margin of the state, but then the writer of these pages has already defined fashion fascism as an organized, centralized, authoritarian democracy. Fascism is definitely and absolutely opposed to the doctrines of liberalism, both in the political and economic sphere. The importance of liberalism in the uh, 19th century should not be exaggerated for present day polemic purposes, nor should we make of one of the many doctrines which flourished in that century a religion for mankind for the present and for all time to come. Liberalism really flourished for 15 years only. <laughs> and that's about all I'm going to read there. That is from the doctrines of fascism, folks. And uh, that was written by Giovanni Gentili, often attributed to uh, Mussolini. And this is All Minus One. Please go like, share, subscribe, that thing, right? Go to the locals, the rumbles, the subscribe star, the peer tube, whatever else. Go watch the live show every Wednesday at 7 p.m. The ends justify the memes. That is on a separate channel. The ends justify the memes or on D Live. Um, so covered all those bases there because I don't want to go on forever with plugging myself. Hey guys. Today, we're going to look at the relationship between liberalism and fascism and how the left likes to obfuscate their fascistic ways by trying to correlate fascism with classical liberalism. Classical liberalism is what you would call today a conservative, a person who believes in capitalism and minimal government intervention. And um, when Gentile wrote this about liberalism, he was talking about classical liberalism. He's talking about liberalism of the 19th century, not what we call liberalism today. So with that, this would be a lot better for my eyes, by the way. <laughs> From uh, publicseminar.org, could a form of liberal fascism help solve the world's problems? Rediscovering H.G. Wells. This was written December 14th, 2020. 
very recently. Now, I uh, want to remind all of you all that according to the fascist, the are absolutely opposed to the doctrines of liberalism. So how could liberal fascism even exist? It cannot. I could go through the doctrines of fascism. You do that yourself. Go find it. Go read it. It is uh, free online, several sources. Um, find the PDF. It's about 33 pages, folks. Or you can do like I do and go buy the hard copy as well. Because you never know what's going to be destroyed in the future. So, uh, the assistant professor of political science in the program of liberal studies at the University of Notre Dame is uh, an idiot because she doesn't understand that these two things are uh, diametrically opposed to each other. But she's going to talk about H.G. Wells' uh, ideas, which are being played out in the world today. And guys, H.G. Wells had uh, several books on this subject and having a new world order. It says, in September 2020, in conjunction with annual meeting of the United Nations, the World Economic Forum organized a summit meeting on what its leaders, Klaus Schwab, was calling the Great Reset. The forum convened leaders from government businesses, international organizations, civil society, along with a diverse group of experts and innovators to initiate, accelerate, and scale up entrepreneurial situations to tackle climate change and advance sustainable development. So, that mouthful of a sentence slash paragraph there was uh, essentially to say that the World Economic Forum works with the UN and they are the ones driving things and their whole agenda is based on climate change. It is based on getting everyone to to root for one world government and there has to be something that can bring humanity together. And what is the crisis that will bring humanity together? Well, the very destruction of the earth. That is, if you believe them. Um, aliens are coming next, of course. <laughs> and, and very likely the way uh, it's been talked about in the media. At the same time, world leaders like Justin Trudeau, Prime Minister of Canada, were using similar terms while speaking at the UN. He argued that the crisis had paradoxically opened and excited new possibilities for global cooperation. As Trudeau put it, the pandemic has provided an opportunity for a reset. No, he said a great reset because he was quoting Klaus Schwab's World Economic Forum. This cannot be disputed, folks. This has been global. The great reset and build back better have both been parroted by world leaders. They have been at the World Economic Forum to the point where Xi Jinping was a exalted speaker, in Klaus Schwab's words. His excellency, if you would, uh, was there. And John Kerry was on the World Economic Forum, who is uh, Biden's climate czar. He said, yeah, we're, we're all about the Great Reset. So there's no hiding this. It just is what it is says to address global challenges like extreme poverty, inequality, and climate change. Well, let me tell you something about poverty. Christ said the poor will always be with you. And I'm not saying that doesn't mean I won't fight to help out those who are poor. But what it tells me is, is that the poor will always be with us. Because it's part of this, this uh, cursed earth, this cursed world that is led by Satan that we uh, live in. Some progressives were not thrilled with this rhetoric. Winter Oak, a British nonprofit with a serious aversion to industrial capitalism and the commitment to social justice, declared that the Great Reset an attempt to establish transitional fascism in order to take total control over every aspect of our world. They decried Schwab's ch um, chilling and grandiose vision of a new order, crafted in secret and coded in... Um, in Andine reset message. I don't know the word. Um, anodyne. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In any case, um, of course they would because they were against capitalism and they're committed to uh, social justice, which probably means they're leftists, which means they're the ones who want to craft the new world. It's all about power, guys, in the end. It's about who gets to rule. <laughs> it really isn't much more about it than that. Um, I'm more concerned about who gets to live and understand uh, the consequences that are coming down the road for all of us and building 
strong societies, and strong societies are societies that take care of each other, not by handouts, but by hand-ups. The Great Reset was also widely embraced as a radical conspiracy across the internet and right-wing mainstream media. It is most implausible uh, vision, Quinn Sobeldine writes in The Guardian, this conspiracy imagines that the global elite is using the COOF as an opportunity to roll out radical policies such as forced vaccination, digital ID cards, and the renunciation of private property. Well, when the World Economic Forum's own website says this stuff directly, then what are people supposed to think? Oh, no, they, they were just kidding over there. Those people talking about the Great Reset, they were just joking around. They weren't serious. Trudeau responded to these short sort of uh, conspiratorial suspicions in a press conference, ensuring everyone that was no such a uh, culture of world leaders constructing a grand plot to take over the world in the wake of the pandemic, except for they air this stuff. They aired Davos back in, you know, January when it was going on or the beginning of February, whenever it was. I think it was the end of January this year. I don't know. I covered it. I talked about it. Um, the, these people write like you, you are crazy for seeing world leaders get together and discuss their plans for the world and telling everyone how the world must go. But no, no, it's not a conspiracy. There's no, they're, they, no, they didn't collude. They didn't discuss anything. Come on guys. And here is, uh, Here's the rub right here. It says, in fact, this is not a secretive cabal political elites meeting behind closed doors, plotting a fascist overthrow of the globe. It is much more in line with what one of the most popular progressive writers of the 20th century, H.G. Wells, had advocated years before in his book entitled, Aptly, The Open Conspiracy. Uh, and you should read that. Though he is now most well-known for his scientific novels, H.G. Wells also wrote a great deal of politics and history. Once a member of the Fabian Society, a pioneering association of socialist experts on public policy that almost destroyed England, by the way, folks, and they're still suffering the, uh, the consequences of that, uh, Wells grew ever more bold in the kinds of political programs he was willing to entertain, fashioning them under what he called an unorthodox definition of liberalism. Hmm. You mean centralized authoritarianism? Antithetical to, to uh, anything that has to do with liberalism. The word from Latin, uh, uh, liber, is, uh, means free. means that you're free. You can't be free when you're under centralized control, folks. Etymology, the meaning of your words and its origin, its history, where it comes from. Very important. You should remember that because it is the left that always wishes to control the language. And you must remain firm with your boundaries because their goal is to destroy all boundaries to create confusion and chaos in order for them to take over and rise from the ashes their goals are to divide and conquer their goals are to be put into power and the way that they do that is by making you fight amongst yourselves fighting with your neighbor over stupid petty things that are meaningless Published in 1928, after the Great War, the Open Conspiracy was Wells' scheme to thrust forward and establish a human control over the destinies of life and liberate it from the present dangers, uncertainties, and miseries. Facing the prospects of environmental dis um, devastation and destruction, nationalism across the globe, again, so sovereignty. I talked about this the other day, yesterday, in my quick shot. Sovereignty, going after sovereignty immediately. Individual sovereignty, national sovereignty, because it's all about the mob. It's about what they want, and you have no individual sovereignty. Mind you, same thing does uh, work within fascism. Classical liberalism doesn't exist. Everyone is their own sovereign. Read de Tocqueville's Democracy in America and how Americans saw themselves as they were sovereigns unto their own right. Wells wanted, progressi the, uh, wanted progressives to embrace a new world order that could have humankind from seemingly inevitable extinction. Now, he thought that the world was going to be in war perpetually, and um, he was sort of right, but totally wrong. The war, or sorry, the world has always been at war, folks. War has never stopped. We do have a higher capacity for devastation today, though, and that is an issue for sure. 
Writing 14 years later, in the midst of World War II, Wells identified three imperatives for the assurance of a peaceful global future in his 1942 work, Phoenix First. The establishment of an overriding federal world control of transport and interstate communications. Second, the federal uh, conversion, uh, or sorry, conservation of the world's resources. And third, <clears throat> A common fundamental law. Notice the middle one there is the world's resources. That's environmentalism. Second one, transport and communication. What are we seeing right now under the coof? Much of that. We're talking about that. The a, a, the regulation of the internet. This is why they like China, folks. This is why they really, really like China and the Chinese censorship. Then it's a big market, of course. <coughs> Excuse me. It, it's a huge market for people to make money in. But the reality is, is that some people can get rich while others are controlled. We can't let the masses think for themselves they can't be free. But why did Wells think such ambitions required an open conspiracy? Because he thought liberals had much to learn about the means necessary for such a world recognition from the staggering success of the 20th century propagandistic fascism. Um, I don't think so, actually. Wells was worried about the world being destroyed. I've read this book. I have the book. I've talked about the book before or early on in, in the uh, history of this channel. Um, not that the history is that old because I haven't even been doing this for a year yet. But guys, um, this was like what most socialists believed at the time because most socialists teetered on the edge of fascism, literally. And this author is saying, oh, liberal form of fascism. There was no liberal form of fascism, folks. It's never existed. Fascism is the cousin. It is the brother. It is the other side of the coin of communism. Socialism is the coin itself, right? And on one side, you have heads. That's communism. On the other side, you got tails. That's fascism. Everything else, true liberalism, classical liberalism, isn't even on that scale or spectrum. As he stated in an address to the Liberal Summer School at Oxford in July of 1932, an awakening of a new human spirit was required, making the uh, conception of an organized big-scale community and mental bi uh, bias of the new generation. In a society too busy about its contemporary nothingness, leaders must appeal to the general intelligence by a propaganda and that there must be a systemic organization of the will and ideas of the publicly uh, public minded, masterful people to handle the problems of the moderate state. The open conspiracy must be an organization that Wells called a liberal fascista or fascisti, fascisti. Um, look, guys, this... I keep saying is very old. There's nothing new with this when it comes to the modern age. Uh, the book Propaganda by Edward Bernays was written in the same timeline-ish, same period. Uh, these people have been plotting and thinking about this for a long time, and it just takes a while for things to be implemented and for the public to be indoctrinated. That's what we're seeing. So much so today that far leftists have no idea that fascism is what they practice. It's what you practice. Most of you out there who are on the far left, you don't practice communism. You don't practice socialism. You practice fascism. That's why you like all of the uh, destruction and rioting and you like the burning of books and you like the centralized control of strong authority. You like power. You like the, the commons coming together to be one. Now, you might argue about the actual tenets of fascism because fascism does not re reject, um, or sorry, fascism does reject materialism, which uh, Marxism does not. Marxism embraces materialism because Mar Marxism is pure hedonism. That is the difference. Fascism is not hedonism. In fact, fascism sees itself as a form of spirituality, as a religion unto itself and the state as a religion, which again calls back to you lefties out there today, you social justice warriors, you postmodernists, you feminists, you intersectionalists, because you all are on the cult of woke, and that is your religion. You are fascists. You're 1,000% fascists. You are authoritarians. You're collectivists. You believe in the religion. You believe that, that the state is more powerful 
and better than the individual and the, the people. Now, you believe the state currently is evil because you think it's fascist because you're retarded. And, and mind you, actually, technically, we are a fascist nation. You know, if you want to get into the economics of it. it, it it's a very loose fascism. It's very light. It's fascism light. But, uh, yeah, technically, we 1,000% we, we are. Um, we're not communist. We're not quite socialist. We're not really a collectivist nation per se, but economically, we are centrally planned largely. There's a lot of regulation. There's a lot of wage and price control. There is essentially um, a, a lot of government subsidies. There's a centralized bank. You know, we could just go down the list. So it says, in the same way that today the Great Reset is to meet the fears of the fantastic grandiose or grandiosity, Wells received significant pushback for his argument. Surely he could not be advocating such an apparently anti-democratic proposal for brainwashing the future generations. Indeed, he was. And he claimed the future of humanity depended on it. And that's what they always claim. We have to brainwash and control and murder people or we won't exist in a hundred years, in a thousand years, in two thousand years. So therefore, you have to let us be evil now. Because the ends always justify the means, guys. Remember when Machiavelli said that? He didn't quite mean that exactly. Uh, by the way, guys, if you aren't aware, Machiavelli is Prince. Uh, he didn't mean that to be an instruction manual. <laughs> you should should read some quotes about that. Um, the preservation of global peace and environmental good would require a massive re-education of the human race. No, it would not. That is uh, some elitist nonsense. It would just take... Uh, nations to be sovereign and folks to leave each other alone not to have uh, people pulling strings as uh, Smedley Butler will once say uh, or once said that he was sent all over the world for the, uh, the the use of business and businessmen back during the progressive era as we still do today universally led and enforced by leaders and citizens alike if wells insisted it must be seen as conspiratorial to convince human beings to do what is for their own good then at least it would be an open conspiracy only a liberal fascism could counter the ascending powers of genuine and genuinely evil fascistic regimes and the devastation wells also saw in the impending environmental destruction of the planet this, my friends, is utterly absurd. Now, I'm not going to continue to read this article. You can find it for yourself. I'm going to move on to what I have next because I have several articles looking at the Great Reset. But I do think you should go check this out for yourself. Could a form of liberal fascism help solve the world's problems? No, because liberalism and fascism are diametrically opposed. A rejecting democracy, fascism rejects the absurd conventional line of political egalitarianism. Meaning it embraces a class society. Uh, so does communism, by the way. It just does not do so openly, admittedly. But Marx says there has to be, there has to be a ruling class. The habit of collective irresponsibility. The myth of felicity and indefinite progress. Not the same thing. So here, this is uh, news.bitcoin.com. A look at the fascist agenda behind the Great Reset and the WEF's reboot propaganda. That is the World Economic Forum, as if you all didn't know. Less than two weeks ago, the International Monetary Fund managing director called for a new Bretton Woods movement. Meanwhile, the IMF is not the only... Uh, Entity pushing for a great reset as the World Economic Forum and other mainstream entities have been promoting the financial uh, reboot, reboot propaganda. Now, guys, keep in mind, the IMF, the World Bank, the UN, World Economic Forum, it's like all the same people, literally. They're just part of like five different clubs, or there's way more than that. There's dozens of them, but... Many of these people are literally involved in three or four of these organizations all at one time. Tell me, tell me with a straight face, when every Western nation in the world follows exactly what these organizations say to do, you tell me that we have sovereign governments. We do not. It's a lie. It's a lie you tell yourself every day because, well, you have a normalcy bias and you don't want to accept the reality 
2020 has been a wide ride, and during the last 10 months, the world moved in lockstep in order to avoid the uh, coronavirus outbreak. The government's reactions to the coup created a different world, and global economy has been uh, has seen better days. During the last report concerning the IMF's call for a new Bretton Woods movement, and this is why I keep telling you too, by the way, folks, we will be moving to the yawn. Mark my words. If we don't, they'll create a new currency, but it'll be controlled by China. The Great Reset concept is very similar to George Orwell's famous dystopian novel, 1984. And some believe the suspect or the subject is a borderline conspiracy theory. There's no borderline about it, man. It's like, oh, we release a thousand videos with a bunch of CEOs and uh, and uh, world leaders talking about what they're going to do to change the world and and bankers and, you know, uh, oil companies. What? What theory are you challenging here? For instance, a website called thegreatreset.com has been floating around the web catching people's attention this year. Additionally, the YouTube video published by the uh, the Corbett Report. Hey, James is awesome. Go check out his YouTube channel or his page because he gets uh, kicked off YouTube a lot. Uh, go check out the Corbett Report uh, website, guys, if you want to follow some stuff more deeply. Offers a guide to the so-called reboot. A great reset conversation is also quite topical and, and discussions can be found. Yeah, here, here, here. Likewise, websites are the great reset. The com have sparked intense speculation about the upcoming financial reset where the global elite focus or forcefully invoke a fourth industrial rev- revolution. The World Economic Forum has been promoting the concept for years and back in November 2016 tweeted about eight, uh, eight predictions for the year 2030. You'll own nothing to be happy. We all know this stuff, right? We've talked about it before. If not, I'll try to link some of these videos at the end of this one. Ever since the Great Reset hashtag started trending again this week, people have also been responding to the 2016 uh, World Economic Forum tweet. Do we aim to get back to where we were before, or should we take the opportunity to make society fairer, smarter, and greener, to get humanity off the road to climate catastrophe, a great reset of one of the world's? or sorry, one of the World Economic Forum's reboot editorial statements. Right, and so forth. So, again, Time Magazine covered this. So the Time articles also filled the uh, equality, uh, bolsterism, and environmental uh, destruction cues from the progressive left. Oddly enough, one editorial note that some segments of society can't make this great leap forward in regard to the Great Reset. However, the author says that the governments can rewrite the social contract to provide for as many as possible remains urgent and vital. How can someone just rewrite the social contract? I don't really believe in the concept, by the way. I use the terminology, but um, I mean, if there's a social contract, it's, it's, it's something like this, like you won't kill me and therefore I won't try to kill you. Other than that, it's might makes right, folks. Always has been, always will be, at least in this world. Not everyone is too keen on the Great Reset reset concept, and there's a number of hit pieces against the uh, idea trending on the web. For a case in point, an editorial published in the publication Winter Oka also calls the trend Schwab's fascist reset. And that would be right here. Klaus Schwab and his great fascist reset. Uh, born in Ravensburg in 1938, Klaus is a child of Adolf Hitler's Germany, a police state regime built on fear and violence, brainwashing and control on propaganda and lies on industrialism and eugenics, on dehumanization and disinfection, on a chilling and grandiose version of, or vision of the new world order that would last a thousand years. I don't think that's quite where Schwab is going with all this, guys, but look. I think Hitler thought he had good intentions too, right? They all do. You think Mao, when he murdered 100,000 of his people, or at least 50,000, but it's probably 100,000 based on documents we keep finding, uh, let them starve to death? You think he didn't think that he was a hero? Because he sure did. Schwab seems to have dedicated his life to reinventing uh, that nightmare and trying to turn it into a reality, not just for Germany, but for the whole world. Worse still, as his own words confirm time and time again, his technocratic fascist vision is also a twisted transhumanist one, which will 
merge humans with machines and curious mixes of digital and analog life, which will infect our bodies with smart dust and it and in which the police will apparently be able to read our brains. And this, as we will see, he and his accomplices are using the COOF pandemic to bypass democratic accountability. There is no democratic accountability, folks. <laughs> Whoever wrote this is quite naive. Unless you're talking about local government, it don't exist. Uh, not, not on the federal or provincial level, not really in the state level governments in the United States. It just doesn't exist when you get that high up. Uh, to override opposition, to accelerate their agendas, and to impose it on the rest of humankind against our will in what terms, and what he terms a great reset. Schwab is not, of course, a Nazi in the classical sense. Well, you know, fascists are uh, not Nazis either, but Nazis are fascist. Since we're uh, going to go down that little road here, that little rabbit hole. So Schwab is not, of course, a Nazi in the classic sense, being neither a nationalist nor an anti-Semite, as testified by the one million uh, Dan David Prize he was awarded by Israel in 2004. Well, being an anti-Semite didn't make you a Nazi, okay? Uh, I'm more than certain that Marx himself, who was a Jew, was an anti-Semite. Pretty sure both Lenin and Stalin were a bit anti-Semitic, despite their Jewish heritage. Um, guys, this is not an exclusively Nazi thing, right? This is actually an old world thing. The Jews have always been looked down upon through most of history. In fact, Christ, or not Christ, uh, God said in the Bible, there's a prophecy given that, that they would be a byword amongst the nations. It's been 1,000% true. But 21st century fascism has found different political forms through which to continue its core project of reshaping humanity to suit capitalism through blatantly authoritarian means. This new fascism is today being advanced by the guise of global governance. Well, thank you for pointing that out. Biosecurity, the new normal, the new deal for nature, and the fourth industrial revolution. Schwab, the octogenarian founder and executive chairman of the World Economic Forum, sits at the center of this matrix-like spider on a giant web. The original fascist project in Italy and Germany was all about the merger of state and business. Uh, no, it was about the, the control of business by the state, and you're missing there that the, uh, the other nations that had uh, implemented fascism, like Franco's Spain, uh, which actually happened during and uh, after the the uh, Second World War, and that's why Spain was not a part of that war and lasted until the 1970s. While communism uh, envisions the takeover of business and industry by the government, which theoretically acts in the interest of the people, fascism was all about using the state to protect the advance and advance the interest of the wealthy elite. No, that is not what fascism is about. That's what it turns into. And I'll tell you why it turns into that, because it incentivizes corruption, like our Federal Reserve Bank incentivizes corruption, which creates the ability to have oligarchs. And, you know, then you get that plutocracy, right? Schwab was continuing this approach in a... Um, denazified post-World War II context when he, in 1971, founded the uh, European Management Forum, which held annual meetings in Davos and Switzerland, which he just changed to the World Economic Forum, right? Here he promoted his ideology of stakeholder capitalism, in which businesses were brought into closer cooperation with government. And I've told you this before, I've been reading The Great Reset on here, right? telling you it's not about what you what he's saying it's about stakeholder capitalism well that sounds good we're all stakeholders in the no that's just called capitalism it's called free markets now if you're going to put something in front of capitalism it's something else and it's probably has something to do with collectivism has something to do with centralized authoritarian government 
Stakeholder capitalism is described by Forbes Business Magazine as the notion that a firm focuses on meeting the needs of all of its stakeholders, customers, employees, partners, and community, and society as a whole. Even in the context of a particular business, it is invariably an empty label, as the Forbes article notes. It actually only means that firms can go on uh, privately shoveling money to their shareholders and executives while maintaining a public front of exquisite social sensitivity and exemplary uh, altruism, which is exactly what I've been saying. It's a pretend word to make people think, oh, this is going to be better because I don't understand what capitalism and, and free markets is. And I don't understand that I get to volunteer my money for services and it's all not based on coercion. It's not, guys. It, 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 right? Like, you might be dumb, and do something because you can't control your own impulses. But that's a problem with you, not a problem with advertisers or anything else. But in a general social context, the stakeholder concept is even more nefarious, discarding any idea of democracy ruled by the people in favor of rule by corporate uh, interest. Yep. Society is no longer regarded as a living community, but as a business whose profitability is the sole valid aim of human activity. Schwab sets out this agenda back in 1971 in his book, uh, Modern, uh, well, I can't read that, Under, I don't know what, Fure, uh, uh, it's German, Modern Enterprise Management and the Mechanical Engineering, okay, glad that was put in English there, <laughs> where uh, his use of the term stakeholders effectively redefined human beings not as citizens, free individuals, or members of communities, but as secondary participants in a massive commercial enterprise. Yes, it is a rewriting of what fascism is because fascism says you do not exist outside the state. Uh, communism does as well, folks. This all became clear in uh, 87. When it says the aim of each of every person's life was to achieve a long-term growth and prosperity. And in any case, in 87, it says it describes itself as its own website, the global platform for public-private cooperation. Okay. Anyways, the article does continue. I am still at the top of this, guys. A very, a very, a very long article. We can get into it here in a little bit. Let's, uh, or get back into it, I mean, here in a little bit, in a few days. It says, let's, uh, let's read this real quick, though. For instance, in his 2016 book, The Fourth Industrial Re Revolution, Schwab writes about the ubersation of work and the consequence of, uh, the consequent advantages for companies, particularly fast growing startups in the digital economy as human cloud platforms uh, classify workers as self-employed. They are for the moment free of the requirement to pay minimum wages, employer taxes and social benefits. The same capitalist callousness shines through in his attitude towards people nearing the end of their working lives and in need of well-deserved rest. Aging is an economic challenge because unless retirement ages are drastically increased so that older members of society can continue to contribute to the workforce, an economic imperative that has many economic benefits, the working age population falls at the same time as the percentage of dependent elders increases. In a properly strong society, you know who would take care of those elders? The children. This is the biblical principle of honoring your father and mother. It isn't just listening to them and being respectful, folks. What it really meant in a Jewish context was providing for them, taking care of them in their elderly years. We have a society that has its priorities upside down, though. Everything in this world is reduced to the economic challenge, economic imperatives, and economic benefit for the ruling class. Well, I'm not really sure where you're getting that from which is another reason why I don't want to go through all this article because it's written from a lefty perspective somewhat who doesn't understand economics, obviously um, when they're saying this is all about the ruling class. I don't know about that. The myth of progress has long been used by the 1% to persuade people to accept the technologies designed to exploit and control us. And Schwab plays on this when he declares that the fourth industrial revolution represents a significant source of hope for continuing to climb the human um, in human development that has resulted in dramatic increases in quality of life for billions of people since the 1800s. That's actually true. Technology and wealth has spread, and that is part of it. Fascism. New normalism and the left. I'll have to check that out some other time. 
So the Great Reset is a global techno-fascist state. The choice is U.S. number six. This is Don Paul. Let's see here. Let me... Uh, there is an article here, folks. Let me just go through this. Ah, oh, it's talking about the, uh, obviously it's comparing both technocracy and transhuman share the racist segregationist precepts of Nazis, Rockefellers, Harvard, Stanford, Sir Winston Churchill, false mass murder, science of eugenics. Klaus Schwab is a professor trained at, in economics and engineering, according to to his uh, Wikipedia bio. I believe he holds doctorates in both. Oh, that's right. Down here it says 17 honorary bestowed upon him. Guy's balling. Schwab was born. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We already covered that. Nope. The site's a little temperamental, folks. Sorry about all that. It says, uh, Through his place and time of birth and upbringing, Klaus Schwab childhood consciously formed during the brutal, orderly rise of Nazi Third Reich, and the child Klaus also felt that the Reich's brutal, chaotic um, fall. He was a baby during the Blitzkrieg. He was in short pants when... Uh, Karl Schu, um, I don't know how to pronounce that, and uh, Stuttgart and Munich were bombed to that jagged shells. So what they're trying to paint here is is that uh, this outlined his life, and I would say actually no, because it would have been Reconstruction afterwards that he would have really remembered and came up through. In any case, uh, I'll cover this some more, because I'm going to be talking about this again later on in the week. So from National Review, the Great Reset, if only it were just a conspiracy. So the National Review gets it. This was uh, November 27th. And it says, the mastermind of the World Economic Forum is just uh, corporatism by another name. And I would agree, National Review. Writing for the Spectator USA, uh, Ben uh, Sixsmith gets to grips with the Great Reset now being proposed by the World Economic Forum. And yes, despite the name... Uh, that sounds as if it were conjured up by some of the conspiracism danker fever swamps of the Great Reset really exists. The World Economic Forum, blah, 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 blah. Indeed, it does. So again, guys, you can read about this. I cover the World Economic Forum all the time. What I wanted to talk about more or less was the um, sort of fascistic nature and uh, nature that is imposed here. Again, this is from the Library of Economics and Liberty. We have the great reset between conspiracy and wishful thinking. <laughs> you could say it's wishful thinking, guy, but uh, when you got every major institution in the Western world behind it, it's going to happen. And really, all they're really doing is just signaling to us because th these things rarely happen according to their plans as it unfolds or timelines. Um, but they just adjust and the actions are coming. They're slow. They continue. So let's go back here to what fascism is. It says fascist concept of life is a, or conception of life is a religious one in which man is viewed in his imminent relation to a higher law endowed with an objective uh, will transcending the individual and raising him to conscious membership of a spiritual society. Those who perceive nothing beyond opportunistic considerations in the religious policy of the fascist regime fail to realize that fascism is not only a system of government, but also, and above all, a system of thought. In the fascist conception of history, man is man only by virtue of his spiritual process to which he contributes as a member of the family and social group the nation and in function of history to which all nations bring their contribution. Hence the great value of tradition and records and language and customs and rules of social life outside history. Man is a non entity. Fascism is therefore opposed to all 
individualistic abstractions based on 18th century materialism and is opposed to all Jacobinistic utopias and innovations. That would be of the French Revolution ilk, but basically the the modern communist. So what does this say here? Well, it says that fascism is technically a religion like wokeism and that the human being, the, the, the singular entity outside of the collective is a non-entity within all of society. And this needs to be understood on first principles. Why am I reading this to you? Why am I talking about the Great Reset? Why am I talking about Klaus Schwab? Why am I talking about fascism? Well, I'll tell you guys, I'm telling you about it because it's misunderstood and you need to understand that we live in a system that's already highly fascistic, highly socialized, and already is under the 10 planks of communism. What? is being debated out there by leftists and most people is the false Hegelian dialectic of communism versus fascism. What do you get? You just get a synthesis of ideas. The Great Reset is about controlling your money, controlling your mind, controlling how you live. And yes, it is authoritarian and centralized. And yes, your government as a part of this, I'm not just talking to folks in the U.S. I'm talking about people in Europe. I'm talking about you Aussies, you New Zealanders. I'm talking about anyone who lives in the westernized world. And unfortunately, guys, it will come because no matter how hard we fight back against these things, they eventually rear their ugly heads back up. Because the way of the world is evil and it will continue to go that way. And maybe you don't believe in this, but I have a little book that, uh, you know, tells me things that are going to happen in the future. <laughs> this is basically what it describes, more or less. One world government and a control that if you do not worship religiously the correct people, the politics, you will not be able to buy or sell but guys, that's about all I have. This has been All Minus One. Please like, share, and subscribe. Go to those other links. Check out the live show tomorrow, Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Eastern. Every Wednesday, we go live. The ends justify the memes. We cover memes. We have guests on. Tomorrow, we'll be with our friends, Jeremy and Delaney of The Weekly Narrative. And... Uh, working on interviews with folks next month right now as well. So with all that said, folks... I hope this has uh, given you some leads, some things to think about, some things to look into. Go read for yourself. And I wish you all well.